hi fam welcome to sweet truth do you dare listen yo this is another segment today on the same day because we have so much to learn yo so much to get into so for this second segment i will be reading from psalm 29 1 to 11 and i cannot wait to get into this yo with that being said father god bless the sweat bless this day and bless us amen and amen and i will be reading from the niv version again this is a psalm of david yo it is david for me and i said this i've said this so many times yo there is so much to learn from this man of god wow and i am honored (laughs) to learn so much from him so with that being said let us get right into it and it reads one ascribe to the lord you heavenly beings ascribe to the lord glory and strength to ascribe to the lord the glory due his name worship the lord in the splendor of his holiness and to ascribe means to attribute something to a cause so as you attribute those things to god Give him his due praise. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Yo, let us talk about worship for a minute, for a quick minute, because there is a big difference that so many don't get to see. Yo, fam, listen to me. Listen to me. Worship matters to God. And so with that, it should also matter to you. Oftentimes, we allow personal distractions to get in the way. Sometimes we go to church, but we don't worship. We sing songs, but we don't worship. See, there is a difference between singing and actually worshiping. You know, you can sing all the praises out there. You can sing the worship music and whatnot, but you are not worshiping. So there is a difference between singing and worshiping and what that trying to and how it should be rather is that we should attribute this two together we should ascribe worship and singing because those are two different things we listen to sermons but we don't worship we may even serve in a ministry area but don't worship See, there are elements to worship that are not worshipped in and of themselves, which means you can do all of them and yet have failed to truly worship God. See, worship is a lifestyle. It is the gathering of believers together when we go to church, when we are with others, you know. Praise is the expression we give to worship as we live. And worship involves more than we realize and recognize. That's why you need to recognize and know these things separately. Because these things, worship and singing, are two different things, like I said before. So, I'm going to give you six reasons for the importance of worship. Number one, worship involves surrender of our lives. When we surrender our lives to God, it's like we are in worship, in service of Him. Two, worship is putting our focus on Him. So we leave the distraction behind. We leave everything behind and say, God, for this and this time, in so and so, I will put my focus on you, Father God. You see, fam, true worship is based on the desire to honor God. It requires a personal relationship with God. As one found in the scriptures, see, worship is not based on the likes or dislikes of the song and whatnot. It is not based on personal priorities or preferences it is a focus on God so it's like when you're saying God I will worship you it's like you're saying I will focus on you father God I am choosing to focus on you worship three fam involves getting out of the way 
we have to learn to remove our worries, our opinions, our questions, and ourselves so we can worship and appreciate honor. It's letting go. Sometimes we get in our own way and we disturb our experience of genuine worship. So once you get out of the way, take yourself out of the way, you can truly worship God. Number four, worship involves personal sacrifice. Praise can be easier when times are good or when we have this big victory and everything's going great in our lives, like everything's great, life's great, I'm living my best life, you know, and it's easy to praise God, but it requires a sacrifice of our own feelings and fear so we can give him the focus he deserves even when we are not in those great times or living our best lives or in that you know victory season or phase you know it requires for us to get our own feelings out of the way so we can focus on God and that means we would have to let go of our fears so that we can truly worship God number five we must worship in the face of pain and loss and i know this is by far the hardest i've experienced loss this year and i'm telling you it is not easy it hasn't been easy it is still not easy but when we worship in the face of pain and loss there is a difference to read there is a difference when worshiping god while dealing with grief and this difference I've had to learn and experience it personally in my life and it is hard but the Holy Spirit gives you that strength he truly he really gives you the strength to just be there and truly have that focus on God and say, Father God, I choose to worship you. The, yes, Father, this is so painful, Father God. This is so, so painful. This is very painful. But I will choose to worship you. I will choose to praise you because only you can comfort me. Listen, Father, only God can comfort you. The true comfort doesn't come from the people around you. I've I've tried, so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've tried to look for comfort in others, you know, in my family, my parents, you know, my other relatives, you name it, friends, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I've truly found that actually my true comfort can come from these people because it will never be enough as long as I'm dependent on them for my comfort. I find myself even more, you know, uh, frustrated because true comfort can never come from them it only comes from God so only the Holy Spirit can comfort you fam and I'm speaking from experience only the Holy Spirit can comfort you when you're dealing with pain and loss and grief and he surely brought me so far in that this this is something that I thought you know that I would never um get to a point where it's like I can truly you know just worship God and listen to God and be and have this relationship with God and have this relationship with the Holy Spirit and listen to him and have him speak to me and have him comfort me like I thought <laughs> it was over for me you know but God is faithful and he's proven to me time and time again that he's got me, that he's always there. The Holy Spirit is always there to comfort me, even when I remember my loved one and it hurts and I cry and I cry and I cry. But the Holy Spirit is always there. I feel him. He's always there to comfort me. So we must worship in that in the face of pain and loss and put shame put the enemy to shame and let the enemy know that even though you made this you planned this for this to hurt me and for me to never get to that place in worship with God shame on you 
shame on you because I now have that elevated experience of worship with God. Like my relationship with God, with the Holy Spirit is elevated in a way that it has never been before. Because now I know that he truly got me. And even King David himself, you know, lost a child. And that is the hardest thing that anyone can ever go through. A parent losing a child is the hardest thing, hardest thing anyone can ever experience on earth. But what did David do? David did not allow that pain to stop his praise and worship and said he got up he praised God he worshiped God he put the enemy to shame and that's that is what we ought to do we have to put the enemy to shame in the face of pain and grief because the enemy wants that to stop you he wants that to be you know like that's it they're going through pain they're going through grief you know they they're never gonna pay attention to god anymore they're never gonna focus on god anymore and for others it is a shame that they actually get to that level it's like they throw god out and it's like god you don't know, blah 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 you know and all these things and they become atheists and you name it but Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted by our Father God. So blessed are we that despite going through grief and experiencing grief and this pain and loss, blessed are we that are being comforted by God. We put the enemy to shame and we say, you know what? My loved ones are alive with God because with God the word says there is no one dead with God everyone with God is alive and just the fact that one day we get to see them we will get to be with them and this time it will be forever this time it will be forever so rejoice in that fact hold on to that fact fam just hold on to that fact And let's not allow the enemy to win. Let's not allow the enemy to have his way. And have us stop believing in God because we are experiencing this pain and this loss. And we're going through grief. And let's not allow the enemy to capitalize on that. Let us put him to shame by letting him know that, you know what? Regardless, despite all this, I will worship God. I will trust in God. I will still believe in God. God is my father. Amen and amen. Number six, worship is celebrating who God is and what he has done. And that uh, all those are the six facts of why worship is important. So I hope you've Learn something from that. Moving on. Verse 3. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of God. Or rather the God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. Yo fam. The voice of God can do so many things, a lot of things. And we have power in our mouths. The word says life and death lie on our tongues. So if we've got so much power, what more God? And so David goes ahead and he makes this list about the voice of God. And so it goes on to say, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. 
He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. Now, Syrian or Syrian used to be a river back in the day. I don't know if it still is, but the voice of God can make that river like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord fam strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the ox and strips the forest bare. Only a voice can do so much. Remember the voice of God is the one that even made the whole world, the whole earth to begin with. So you don't need me to tell you that it is powerful and majestic. You know it is. And in his temple all cry glory. 10. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. Yo, this is just a fact. There will never be another king. There is only one king. There is only one Lord that is enthroned. And that is our Father God, Jesus Christ, the Lord of heaven and earth. He is the only one. 11. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. So if you want that peace, if you want peace and strength, there's only one who can give it to you. And who is that? That is the Lord, our God. He is the only one who can give you this peace, this comfort, this strength that you are in search of. So if you want these three things, you want peace, you want comfort, you want strength. Only God can give you this. People will never give you peace, comfort, and strength. They may contribute to it. But the fullness of it can only come from God. So the fullness of everything good in life can only come from God. So I hope you've learned so much fun because pay attention fun. There is so much to learn from the word. And that's why I encourage that you need to read the word for yourself. Because when you read the word for yourself, you know, you will know. All these things, the promises, the goodness of God. And so with that being said, your fam, be blessed, be encouraged, and be fearless. Remember, God loves you.